Ik schrijf een brief aan Christen wat over die wereld verspreid is. Omdat het zij wil, was het goed ons deel die woord van die waarheid door die leven gebracht, zodat so ons, om het zo so te stellen, eerstelingen kan wees van alles wat hij geschiet heeft. My fellow believers, God was delighted to give us birth by the truth of his infallible word so that we could fulfill his chosen destiny for us and become the favored ones out of all his creation. Wanneer een mens een geloof een toets deerstaan, veroorzaak dit dat jy kan volhaard. Be quick to listen, but slow to speak, and be slow to become angry. Ons maak allemaal baie foute. Maar een persoon wat sy tong en toom kan hou, kan dit ook recht kry met sy hele lichaam. We use our tongue to praise God our Father, and then we turn around to curse a person who was made in his very image. As jy ja sê, moet het ja wees, en as jy nee sê, moet het nee wees. Dan sal jy nie veroordeel word. Listen, those of you who are boasting today or tomorrow will go to a new city and spend some time and go into business and make heaps of profit. But you don't have a clue what tomorrow may bring. Jylle reikdom sal definitief vergaan en jylle kleren dier motte gevreed word. Confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and then pray for one another to be instantly healed. Gelukkig is die mens wat dier beproeving volhaard. As hy toets sy geloof as echt bewys, dan sal hy die lewe as oorwinningskroon ontvang. God het hierdie lewe beloof aan hulle wie hom lief het. Welcome to Mosaic and this online service experience. As part of our worship today, we'll continue the sermon series, He Asks You, and we'll also partake in communion together today. So please get your bread and your wine or your juice ready to do that with us. Let's worship together. Yeah, 
beweeg hier tussen ons Ek buig voor u Ek buig voor u The way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper allows us to know him intimately and follow him closely through the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And on that night before Christ's death, he sat with friends. He broke the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. And he took the wine and said, this is my blood shed for your sins. Do this, eat, drink, in remembrance of me. And as we prayerfully listen to the words of the next song and take the communion, receive Christ's words also to you. This is my body broken for you and this is my blood shed for you. Eat this bread, drink this cup,
Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. You have all my devotion, every breath and emotion. I lay them at your feet. Strip away my distraction, all that steals my affection. I lay them at your feet. Jesus, oh Jesus, what more could I want? Jesus, oh Jesus, oh you are enough. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as a pathway to peace, taking as He did the sinful world as it is and not as I would have it, trusting that He will make all things right. More than I could imagine Your love rescued my passion I worship at your feet You are all that I treasure Take my heart, I surrender I worship at your feet Jesus, oh Jesus, what more could I want? Jesus, oh Jesus, oh you are enough. I'm alive in your presence, I could stay here forever. Jesus, oh Jesus, what more could I want? with you 
forever. Amen. There's now an opportunity for you to give financially to the ministry and the ways of giving will be on your screen. You're also welcome to visit our website and click on here and the ways of giving will also be there. During this lockdown, we've had many conversations with people struggling to navigate their boundaries in some relationships. Because in our normal routine of life, it's easy to to have those in place. But now, most of us are stuck in the same space together 24-7. Some of us don't have anyone around us 24-7. So how do I grow in setting boundaries and then accepting boundaries from others? As part of our Formatio learning experiences, we've developed a learning experience called Boundaries Online. And this learning experience will help you to navigate these boundaries and setting them healthily in your life. You can register for that right after the service on our website. Johan is continuing our series with the question, what is it to you? Uh, We're going to start with a test today. You can just answer yes or no and give yourself a point every time you say yes. And you can keep score with your one hand. Think about the last few months. Did you at any time wish you could go on holiday? Or that your family can go on holiday? Did someone in the family suggest that you take a long ride or a run? Like, Lavi, why don't you do the comrades today by yourself? In other words, just give me some space and go and spend all your energy somewhere else. Did you regret saying yes? Did you feel, I can't live with this person and I can't live without this person? Did you at any time felt stuck in the relationship? In other words, I don't have a choice. I've just got to do it. Do you feel that there are some unresolved issues that keep on surfacing in your relationship? It's as if you can't move on. It's just there all the time. So how did you do? If you had a few yeses, it's not going very well with you. This test gives you an indication of the boundaries in your life. Now, boundary is a fence. It's a, a clear marker of what's yours and what's not yours. In other words, what you are responsible for, and not just responsible for, where I can exercise my will, and what I'm not responsible for, and where I can't exercise my will as I wish. Um, Boundaries give you an indication of what you should say yes for, and what you should say no for. It's your kingdom. And we all have a kingdom. Uh, Perhaps it's the easiest to understand if we look at ourselves physically. My body is me. I have the responsibility to care for myself, to look after myself, to sleep, to exercise, to do whatever it is. But I also have the privilege to decide what I want to do with my body, where I want to go, who can touch me. And, of course... It has more to do with just my physical body. I also have a physical space where I live. I have a room. It's my room. I can decide to open the door for somebody or to keep somebody out. It's private. Now, we don't only have physical boundaries. We also have non-physical boundaries. Emotional, spiritual boundaries. Your thoughts, your emotions, 
your relationships, spiritual boundaries, you have the ability to make decisions. But here's one of the big challenges in life is that we can't always determine what we are responsible for and what we're not responsible for. That's one of the things that happened between Jesus and Peter when they met after Jesus' resurrection. Jesus told Peter, when you get old, you will lose a part of your kingdom. You will not be able to take responsibility physically for yourself. To go where you want to go and to do whatever you feel like doing. Peter, you will be handed over. It's exactly what happened to Jesus. He was handed over. And other people will decide what will happen to you. Peter felt sad. He looked around. He saw John. And he asked Jesus, Now what's going to happen to John? And Jesus told Peter, What is that to you? In other words, Peter, what are you doing now? You're meddling in the affairs of somebody else now. It's got nothing to do with you, Peter. What is that to you? It's a question to live with. It's a question that he asks us. What is that to you? So there are three invitations, at least, wrapped up. In this question that God asks us, first of all, to become aware of the boundaries that you're living with. And you can become aware by reflecting on your motivation, why do I do this, and on the actions, what am I doing? Peter is upsetting the equilibrium, the harmony, the peace, the connection in his relationship with Jesus by interfering in that relationship. A relationship is a living connection, space, bond between people. And that space is, uh, is alive. It's either life-giving or, the, or it takes the life out of you. It either gives you energy or takes the energy away out of you. And we are responsible for our relationships. We're responsible to clean that space and to make that space energizing, joyful. And uh, it takes a lot of work, but it takes a consciousness of what's happening between me and somebody else. A lot of us don't have a high social IQ. It has nothing to do with uh, intelligence. You can be very intelligent, but don't know anything about relationships, emotionally what's happening between you and other people. Sometimes we refer to people like that, well, they're a bit more task oriented not so sensitive or in tune with what's happening. It's the first thing. If you are living with a high degree of irritation, if you feel, oh, I can't stand being with that person or talking about stuff, it means that that space is polluted. It gives you a good indication of something about boundaries what's happening between you and that person. The other thing is to ask yourself, why am I doing it? So what am I doing? What's the effect? Why am I doing it? I think Peter had a good intentions. What he had with Jesus earlier on, when Jesus said, I'm going to be handed over, I'm going to suffer, and I'm going to die on a cross. Peter said, don't fear when Peter is near. It will not happen to you, Lord. 
I will see to it. So rest assured. I will take away your suffering. Jesus did not respond very favorably. He said, Peter, what are you doing? You interfering with God's will for my life. This is my life and the, it's, it's my package. This is what I should do with my life. And now you want to stop it. Exactly the same thing might have happened now again with John. He might have had other motivation. He might have been jealous. Why does this happen to me and not to John? He always gets the better deal. I just want to make sure it's fair and square. It might have been manipulation. No, control. Well, I want to control this situation. I can't do anything about my situation. I accept my situation. But I will get a better deal for John. John will think and thank me forever for what I've done for him. Jesus says, no. So your motivation is very important. It's not just your action. Now, sometimes we can say and feel it's just important what we do. We can get very pragmatic about life. It doesn't matter what your intentions are. No, it is important. The eldest son, in the parable of the prodigal son, did all the right things, but with the wrong intention. He lived with the wrong motivation, the wrong energy. He was actually bitter. And Jesus said, it's not good. Well, that's the way the Pharisees lived. Did the right things for the wrong reasons. T.S. Eliot said, that might be the last big temptation. Doing the right things for the wrong reasons. No, it's important. Why do you do it? It's not just the direction in life that counts and not the intention. It's both of them. So become aware of your intentions and of your boundaries that you live with. The next important thing would be to make a decision. But to discern if you want to make the decision. Discernment means that I make a decision in a certain way after I've listened to myself, to the circumstances, to other people's advice and input, I'll come to a conclusion and then make a decision. That's Paul's suggestion. When he spoke about boundaries, and the Bible speaks about boundaries in quite a few different ways, he says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, that we should carry each other's burdens. But then, in verse 5, each one of us should carry carry his own load. There's a difference between a load and a burden. You cannot carry somebody else's load. Only help them with a burden. And in other words, we should say yes to our own load. No to somebody else's load. Yes to their burden. Well, to the extent that we can. And uh, we should say no to a burden that I can't carry. Perhaps I don't have the energy or the means to do it. I shouldn't overcommit in carrying somebody else's burden. And you should discern, because it's not easy. It's not always that clear. And that's what Jesus is telling and suggesting to Peter. When he said, Peter, when you're old, your boundaries will shift again. What you are responsible for and what you're not responsible for. Well, think about it. As a child, you were born without boundaries. You had to learn to take responsibility for your own life. Well, and first of all, we start the education with physical boundaries. You've got to eat, listen to your tummy, to the hunger, to the thirst, and start controlling your bladder. It's all in your hands. Develop that boundaries. Care for yourself. Protect yourself. But then 
we move on to this, the psychological boundaries. You know, your thinking, your perspective, your emotions. How do you think about that? How do you feel about it? What are you going to do about it? And as children, we tend to mess it up. We take responsibility for things we shouldn't take responsibility for. Say, for instance, if you don't receive the love and the care of the caregivers, uh, your caregivers, you will come to the conclusion there's something wrong with me. You wouldn't think they should change or do something else. No, I should change and do something else. And if two children have a fight, the father or the mother asks, who started this fight? I haven't heard a child. Or children fighting. I did. No, I did. No, it's my fault. I did. No, usually, no, it's not me. It's the other one. So somebody is not taking responsibility for something that he should take responsibility for. We should learn about boundaries. And unfortunately, we haven't all received a good education in boundaries. And we see it if we look at adults today. They do the same thing that children do. Um, if a father or a mother tells a child, you're making me mad, you're driving me mad, what are you saying? You're telling the child, you are responsible for my emotional well-being. You are causing this in my life. It's not my response. You are responsible for your own emotional state and mental state. And you can't put it on somebody else. A parent like that will do all the homework for the child. And of course, if something doesn't work out at school, it's the teachers or the horrible children or the system, but it's not the child's fault or your fault. And the truth is much more complicated than that. Yes, it can be the, the, the teacher, the, the system or whatever, but all, there's always something that you should take responsibility for and should act on. So we've got to learn and we've got to discern. And that's why we've got to pray about it and ask God to guide us and to give us the wisdom so that we can know what we should do in the circumstance. The third big invitation is to follow Jesus. Well, to follow his example in saying yes and saying no, but more than his example, to listen to his voice. Now, if we ask for discernment, we ask for wisdom. Wisdom is... Um, to know exactly what I should do now. The best to, to apply the knowledge that I have to the specific situation that I'm in. And God will give it to you. Um, he, he, he will make things clear to you. And He will enable you to say yes and no for the right things. Just as Peter... We are challenged in a certain specific way in saying yes and no. For some of us, it's difficult to say no. We can say you're a bit compliant. You can't say no. You say yes to things that harm you. You might be unable to hear no. You don't hear it easily. It's more the controller. Um, if, if somebody says, yeah, I'm not sure, you say, Thank you. You hear, you hear yes. And you tell the person you'll never be unhappy. You did the right thing by saying yes. You're not that sensitive. Don't respect the, the boundaries of other people. You could be a bit non-responsive. That's the people that can't say yes. No. There are legitimate needs around you that you should say yes for. You've got your own load that you should carry and you don't say yes to it. You've got your life that God has given you to live and you don't accept it. You want something else. 
and you escape out of it and live through a hero or somebody else, even through your children. What I couldn't do in it, Jeff, I want my children and I will help them to do it. No, say yes to your own life. Live your own life. Um, you can't hear yes. That's the avoidant. People say yes. And, and you can't become vulnerable by admitting that you need the care, the assistance of somebody else. It's all different ways that we might have challenges with obeying Jesus and following him. So where, where are you today? Perhaps you're at a place where you're not sure. You're, you're living in a relationship that's really taking the life out of you. It's a sign. It's a call to change. But you don't know exactly what to say yes or no for. There's a prayer. It's a very popular prayer and uh, used widely across the world, and especially in the AA circles. It's called the prayer of serenity. And it's, uh, the prayer goes like this. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. We pray, and you pray, and you can live with this prayer. Pray it every morning, every evening, and as often as you think about it during the day. Lord, I ask for the serenity to accept, to accept the load, to accept the burden that I should carry. I, I ask for the courage to take it on and the wisdom to know it, what to say yes for, what to say no for. So once you start exercising the muscle that you haven't used, uh, for instance, to say no, um, you might find there's an inner resistance. It's not all that easy. It takes time. And you should sometimes just take small little steps. It can upset a relationship tremendously if the boundaries start to shift. And uh, you might, for instance, feel that I feel so guilty by saying no. It feels as if I could have done more, could have helped more. Uh, I'm dropping the person. I can't do that. You might sit with guilt. You might sit with fear. If I say no, they might reject me. They might say I'm not good enough. That's why I can't say no. But you've got to start to exercise that model and do the right thing. Trust him with your life. And, and, and with what you should do, I believe in him. By losing, you will receive. Losing your life, you will receive your life, Jesus said. It's sometimes good to get a coach, uh, especially if you don't know about the muscles and what exercises to do to, to really help you to develop. Get a coach, somebody that can walk alongside of you and know something about boundaries to draw the line and to take responsibility and to exercise your right to live your life for God. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the life that you've given us. We ask you to give us wisdom in our relationships and thank you for the wonderful adventure that we can be on in this life with you um, to discern, to see how life unfolds and how you give it to us. Thank you that your purpose for us is to flourish. But doing this, we will discover what it means to really love and to do what you want us to do. We thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you want to journey with us on the matter of boundaries, we have an interactive learning experience for you and you're welcome to register and to participate in this approximately three-hour um, educational experience on boundaries. 
May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. May he empower you and give you wisdom to live the life that he wants you to live. Amen.